Tonight, the race for Lansing's top job. Over the next hour, five mayoral candidates will square off on issues like infrastructure, justice reform, and more. And we'll get the answers you need to know. The 2021 Lansing Mayoral Debate, presented by Fox 47 News and City Pulse, starts now. Here's your host, Fox 47 News senior reporter, Sarah Grimmer. Good evening and welcome to the 2021 Lansing Mayoral Debate. My name is Sarah Grimmer. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are excited tonight. We have five of the six candidates running for Lansing Mayor. They're to my right right here. Those candidates are Mayor Andy Shore, Melissa Huber, Council Member Patricia Spitzley, Council Member Kathy Dunbar, and Farhan Sheikh Omar. The candidate's position on stage tonight was chosen at random throughout a draw. There's a sixth candidate in the running for Lansing Mayor, Larry Hutchinson Jr. He is not participating tonight. Fox 47 is presenting this debate tonight with our co-host, The City Pulse. You'll find to my left their contributor, Kyle Kaminsky, on the panel. You'll also find The City Pulse and MERS News, Kyle Mullen, along with Fox 47's neighborhood reporter, Erica Murphy and Larry Wallace. Before we get started and I let these panelists start their questioning tonight, we do want to go over some debate rules. Opening questions will have varying time limits. Panelists will let the candidates know how long they have to answer those questions. For all other questions, candidates will have 90 seconds to answer. Candidates, panelists, and myself will be able to see the time on a countdown clock. Rebuttals will occur at my discretion, and if granted, the candidates will have one minute for them. Once the question portion of the debate has finished, each candidate is going to have one minute for a closing statement. Panelists can repeat questions if needed, but they will not reword them. Panelists who ask the initial question can also ask a follow-up question to that same candidate. Candidates will then have 30 seconds to answer the follow-up question. Panelists will use flags to indicate that they would like to ask a follow-up question. Candidates will also have flags to ask for a rebuttal, which again will be up to the host or me to grant one. If a candidate goes over the time limits, we reserve the right to silence their microphone. And for the sake of time, we reserve the right to alter time limits for answers. We will make sure both the panelists and the candidates know if this is going to happen. So those are the rules for our debate tonight. We are looking forward to a fantastic and an informative debate. We are going to begin with our opening questions, and that's going to come from our panelists, Kyle Kaminsky. Thanks, Sarah. This first question is only for the challengers. Beginning with Melissa Huber and then going down the line, in one minute, why do you want to be mayor, and what would be your number one issue if elected to the office in November? Thank you. I've decided to run for mayor because I felt compelled and responsible to do whatever I could to help change our broken system of government. As a community activist for the last 15 years, I've seen some of the underbelly of our, of our political system that's run across many administrations. So it's not aligned with one person, it's with our system. So that would be my priority and, and taking us from the current system that we have to something that would be more like a city manager and in the interim focus on bringing ethical change to our city politics. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you. Well, folks, we can't fix the issues that are facing our city alone. We have to do it together. You know, our city is in crisis. We're looking at, you know, gun violence. Um, our youth are, are, are struggling. Um, we have fiscal challenges. We have social challenges. And, and we all need to work together to solve those challenges. What we've seen in the past is that we have seen decisions come out of the ninth floor without public input. And, you know, our city has lost, has lost confidence in our city government. Transparency, accountability, trust, and leadership. Without that, you cannot provide basic city services to our residents. And right now, I'm seeing a lack of trust in our city's ability to be transparent, to be accountable for uh, mistakes and issues that are happening. And because of that, our, our residents don't trust what's coming out of our city government. And if you don't trust what's coming out of our city government, we are unable to provide critical city services that our residents deserve. And so Council that's why I'm running Spitzley. for mayor. Thank you very much. I apologize. Our timer yes. is out, but the good news is I have it right in front of me, so I'm going to keep track of the time tonight. When you have 20 seconds left, I'll tell you 20, okay. 10, 10, then I'll cut you off when the time's up. I appreciate up. that. I, yeah, I apologize. That. So, Council Member Dunbar, whenever you're ready. Thank you very much. 
After 16 years on the Lansing City Council, I feel like it is time to step up because we need a leader in the city that has vision and purpose. I feel right now, and many residents feel right now, that we need somebody that's willing to enact bold initiatives to address the complex problems that we face. And right now, we have a strong mayor system, but we don't have a strong mayor. I feel like we, we have to have a mayor who demonstrates compassion and empathy and takes accountability for things that happen in the city. We also need a mayor that initiates, um, that moves things forward, that doesn't just react to things that land um, on 20. the desk but actually uh, move, move innovative, uh, progressive ideas forward. And I don't like the idea that the ship is rudderless right now. I am, I am sad that the Ten. city employees and the staff feel that way, and I would like to be the leader to bring them under the fold and, and lead the city forward with vision. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sheik Omar? I am running for Lansing mayor because our local government has been too disconnected from us for too long. By so many measures, our city is weaker and less prosperous than it was four years ago. In 2020, just last year, we've had 22 homicides in this city. Just that same year, we've had three U.S. service members die in Afghanistan. This is a country that has the Taliban. However, their, their streets are a lot safer than our streets. This year, we've had 16 homicides in this city. The truth is, this mayor has no plan. This police chief that we have has no strategy. We need new leadership. Lansing desperately needs new leadership. And that's why I'm running for Lansing mayor. We've had nine black current and former city staffs suing the mayor for racial discrimination. Nine people are suing this mayor and this city for racial discrimination. We've had another lawsuit which is a federal lawsuit against the mayor Mr. and the Sheik city. Mr. Omar, that is your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And candidates, you'll see, thankfully, we have our clock back. So from now on, you can see that. This next question is going to be for Mayor Shore only, and it's coming from Kyle Malin. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, mayor, why do you think you deserve another four years in office? In one minute, please, sir. Sure. Well, thank you, Kyle. Uh, all right, so the clock's working. There we go. Thank you, Kyle. Um, you know, this has been a, a tremendously tough year, but when you look at the four years, I'm proud of the accomplishments that, we've, uh, that we have uh, accomplished here in the city of Lansing. Um, we came in with the idea of strengthening our neighborhoods, of increasing jobs and investments in the city, with uh, creating partnerships with our local governments that are our neighbors and our schools, uh, doing it with equity, and ensuring that we are creating the city services and infrastructure that the residents want. And we've been able to do that. We have just a tremendous number of accomplishments. I certainly can't say that in the next 30 seconds, but you can go to my website at www.andyshore.com where you can see many of these accomplishments. But when you talk about housing, when you talk about streets and sidewalks, when you talk about uh, affordable grocery, uh, we have been able to accomplish many of these things, but there's more work to do. And I look forward to, to being that person if the citizens of Lansing uh, will vote for me on August 3rd. Thank you. And I do see your request for rebuttal. This did not directly attack you, so we're going to pass on that for now, but thank you. This next question is for every one of the candidates. It's going to start with Mayor Shore and go down the line, and it is coming from our Larry Wallace. Yep, so this is actually a two-part question. Um, with just a show of hands, all of you, how many of you guys support reducing the police budget? Okay, and beginning with Mayor Andy Short, in just one minute, explain what changes would you make to the police department budget if elected, and describe what public safety reforms would you like to make? Well, I'm confident that the, that the budget is where it needs to be in terms of providing services. Uh, we just were able to provide five new officers. We're going to be filling the vacancies. Uh, the people of the city of Lansing, they expect officers when they call 911. When they have problems, whether it's speeders or break-ins, uh, gun violence, they expect to have an officer there. Now, I have been very uh, progressive in terms of reforms. We're making sure that people aren't being pulled over for equipment failures and things like that. We were the first city in the state to have a social worker as embedded with our police department, and we just added another one. Our police do a great job with community service. We put resources into our police department to engage trust with our citizens. But our citizens are expecting that when there's something that happens in their street, when they call 911, their home, that an officer is going to come. And we need to have the resources to provide that. So I'm confident that the budget 
is good where it is now. We will continue to review that every year, but uh, that's, that's where we're at. Ms. Huber. Okay, thank you. So when I say I support reducing the funding for a police department, that does not mean I'm asking to reduce funding for all the systems that keep us safe and that prevent crimes and work on public safety. But what I believe is that we need to reallocate some of our funding to move more towards preventing crimes and producing, improving our response times. So that means carefully and thoughtfully moving some of our functions to other departments and other, other civilians, perhaps, when we have issues like uh, non-injury non motor vehicle incidents and parking lots. It took two hours for the last time for someone to respond, but I did not need a police officer necessarily to do that. That would have been something that could have been taken care of by another, another type of position. So I, so I support this gradual and, and incremental reallocation to programs and resources outside of the police department. And I would include um, adding Huber, more. Thank that you. is your time. Thank, thank you. you. Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you. Let me be clear. We do need to transform how we do public safety in the city of Lansing. Whether that um, requires, you know, diverting of funds from the police department, um, establishing new programs, but we need to we need to transform how we do public safety in the city of Lansing. And we can't do that alone. And we can't do it in a silo. You know, we have to work together on all of these issues. And so um, under a Spitzley administration, I would close the city jail. Right now, um, that's a huge liability for the city of Lansing. And that would save us $3 million roughly a year, money that could be used for community-based programs. I would set an expectation that every resident should feel safe and respected in all parts of the city and all interactions with city government. I would support and implement the BREATHE Act and initiatives recently announced by Sarah Anthony and the president. I would create more community police officers. I would also expand the investigative unit within the Lansing Police Department to address unsolved murders. Our residents Ms. Spitzley, are de deserve that is your closure. Time. Thank you very much. Council Member Dunbar. Thank you very much. I'm a numbers person. Anybody that knows the work that I do on council knows that I dig into the budget and I find savings and I find the most effective way to put money where it can be doing the goal that it's intended to do. Um, our goal in having police, the ideal goal of police, is to keep the public safe. We have had our 16th gun homicide this year. Has increasing the police budget kept those kids safe? No, it didn't. Um, what we have right now, looking at public safety, I'm, I'm, I study. I look at the data. The data says that crime is caused by poverty and inequity. The funding needs to be put in that realm. I don't see any sense of urgency from this mayor to do that, putting more police officers in the budget. Let's just make this clear. These are not police officers that we're putting on the road. These are positions that are being funded, just like the nine that are already funded that we cannot find candidates for. So we are earmarking money that cannot be used for other purposes to hold in case and when we find a qualified candidate. Ms. That Dunbar, is, not that the is way your time to address its 55 seconds. I'm not sure why it paused. It's 104 here. I'll start keeping you updated once again. Okay, I'm Thank following you very that. Much. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Sheik Omar, your time begins. I'll give you a 20 second countdown. Thank you. Um, the truth is, police officers do not keep us safe. In fact, police officers do not prevent crime. And right now, we have 75 unsolved homicides in the city. So not only are they not stopping crime, not preventing crime, but they can't even solve the crime. So what exactly are we paying for? We're paying $50 million each year to this police department. For what? We've had 22 citizens die in this city last year. We have 16 dead this year, and we still have six months left. Folks, it's time that we deploy community-led intervention programs. And the purpose of these programs is to prevent crime before it happens rather than responding to crime after it happened. That's what police officers do. They respond to crime. They don't stop crime. And that's, and that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest back into the community. Our kids need resources. They need opportunities. They need guidance. They don't need more policing. And I Mr. will do that. Mr. Sheikh Omar, that is your time. Thank you.
Thank you very much to all of our candidates. So that concludes our opening questions. Now we are going to move on to our specific questions for the candidates tonight. They will each have 90 seconds to answer their specific question. The first one is going to be for Mayor Shore. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Now, Mayor Shore, some felt that uh, you stumbled on a question more than a year ago with members of the Lansing chapter of Black Lives Matter. So we're going to give you another shot at this one. What is equity and what role does our city government play in fostering equity in the city? Well, thank you, Kyle. And uh, I was certainly not prepared for the question at the time. I thought I was a participant and or I thought it was a, an observer. And it turns out I was a participant. Um, I am a strong believer in equity. I am a believer that that somebody who in the past has not been able to get ahead has had a disadvantage. And you have to provide resources to those people to make sure that they can get ahead and be have equity with others. Uh, a good example here in Lansing is our Neighborhoods of Focus program. We have several areas of the city that uh, have not been able to get resources, uh, have not been able to get housing resources, have not been able to get uh, all kinds of different things that they need. So we created Neighborhoods of Focus. We created them in three parts of the city, and we purposely mapped it out and then decided we're going to have Habitat for Humanity. We're going to have uh, the zoo. We're going to have community development block grant dollars. Those are all going to be put into those areas, creating equity. Uh, those are things that I think are very important for our citizens to show that those who have traditionally not been able to, to get ahead, we're going to help them as their government because in the past they have been legally had barriers. One of the areas in our city that we have created a neighborhood of focus was formerly a redlined area. So that was an area that, that African American folks could not get mortgages. We're going to help out in those areas. Uh, we're going to continue to look and look at the, the census data, look at the, um, the in household incomes. Um, we're going to continue to utilize our Office of Financial Empowerment to make sure that those who have not been able to get ahead in the past and have not had equity are be able to, will be able to have that equity. Thank you, Mayor Short. This next question is going to be for Ms. Huber. You have 90 seconds. As a citizen, in what ways do you think you have served as a change maker in Lansing? And what sort of management and leadership experience do you have that would make you capable of managing the city, all of its departments, and hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars? Thank you for the question. Well, I'm very proud of the leadership style that I have created over the years in working with both neighborhood groups, nonprofit groups, and in my positions working with faculty and large numbers of community members and community groups working to address their business issues and their community issues. So I have built a very collaborative style, and that's one that I would like to bring to the city that helps us to move in a direction away from what I've seen in the past, where so many leaders have created a hostile environment where people are afraid to tell their leaders the truth, and we end up making really big mistakes that cost people's lives and livelihoods. So that's really important to me, to, to model that authentic style of leadership and capacity. So as a, as a manager, I've also worked with lots and lots of budgets and with staff and with volunteers, so I'm very confident in my ability to do that. And one thing you should note about me is I build teams. That's the most important thing to me. I, this is not about me. This is about the team that I bring and the capacity that our entire team brings with our expertise and our values and our North Star that is focused completely on serving citizens. Thank you. This next question is going to be for Council Member Spitzley. Councilwoman, in a recent interview with City Pulse, you raised concerns about mayoral transparency and accountability. Please describe two ways in which you would be more transparent and more accountable. Thank you for that. Um, we'll take the recent um, announcements of the mayor's task force on crime. Um, you know, we have to work together on these. And, um, I, you know, it's nothing I haven't said, but I'm, I am disappointed um, about the makeup of this task force. You know, our community is in crisis right now, and the task force should have been community leaders, community groups um, who are already working on this, who are working on gun violence, you know, teachers, the business leaders um, from day one. And, you know, I'm not really surprised that city council wasn't involved, but I am disappointed. And I continue to be baffled over the disregard of the Lansing community. And I know that the last sentence of his press release says that he'll reach out to community leaders, but it seems like an afterthought. And to now commit to adding those important voices seems a little disingenuous. And so what we have to do is we have to bring city government out into the light of day. We ha you have 30 seconds. Oh, we have to stop 
forming committees and alliances that require non-disclosure agreements that don't meet out in public. Um, and we have to have, you know, an open, transparent um, view of government. That's why folks aren't trusting government right now. They don't trust what comes out because they don't see how the decisions have been made. And if they don't trust the decisions, then they don't trust that we're doing what all we need to do to move the city forward. Thank you. Thank you, council member. This next question is going to be for council member Dunbar. Yes, um, council member Dunbar, um, your council attendant records reflect that you've been routinely late to council and committee meetings. Your campaign website also says that you're outspoken, unconventional, and sometimes even brash. How do you think those attributes align with representing the city of Lansing as mayor? It's a wonderful question. I'm human. I am like almost every person that I work with in the community. Um, the times that I have been late in the past, um, not during Zoom, I run a nonprofit. I work out of a church. I do direct uh, service with homeless folks. Um, I work with low income folks. They walk in, they need services. I won't walk away from them. So there are times when I come late to council. I have not missed votes because of being late, I don't believe, um, but I have missed the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning. Um, and it has not affected my ability to lead the city, to perform my duties. Uh, we work 24 hours a day. So the attendance record for me is a nominal issue. My personality, that's me. I relate to people. I, I commune with people through humor. I find ways to connect with liberals, conservatives, rich, poor, you name it. Um, it is my path to humanity. It is how I work with folks, and it's how I build coalitions. Uh, you'd be surprised with the folks that I work with. Um, very, very unconventional, uh, but that's why people like me, because I am not what people expect from a politician. I'm a Birkenstock wearing, leather jacket wearing, motorcycle driving, person who lives and breathes community development. And I think that it's time that we have somebody in the office that looks, acts, thinks, and respects our community. Thank you, council member. I have a follow up. Sure. Yep. Um, council member Dunbar, um, in the answer, you actually say that you're involved in a lot, of, a lot of different organizations and you have a lot of responsibilities. If elected as mayor, What's going to happen to all of those responsibilities? I have a secession plan for my nonprofit. So we've already chosen uh, the, the way that it's going to transfer. So my farmer's market, the farms, the, um, the pantry, the 24-hour food pantry, everything will be turned over to a staff that is ready to, to run with it. I'm confident. Thank you. This next question is for Mr. Sheik Omar. Uh, sir, you are an activist. Uh, how have you worked with city leaders to bring about change? Uh, could you give us an example or two? Um, I've always been and will continue to be a tireless advocate for families and communities who feel unheard. I came here 15 years ago as a refugee, and I know what it's like to be powerless. I know what it's like to feel voiceless. I am running for mayor to give voice to the voiceless and to defend the defenseless. As far as working with city leaders, I've called into city council meetings. I've led and organized many uh, protests in the city and in East Lansing. I have communicated uh, with many of them via email or Zoom, and I will continue to do so. Uh, my job is to represent the people and to put the people's agenda first. I will change City Hall is no longer going to be called City Hall because it has always represented politicians. When I get elected, we're going to change City Hall to the People's Hall because I'm going to represent the people and get this city uh, back to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. This next question is going to be for Ms. Huber. The COVID-19 pandemic appears to be approaching its final chapters, but businesses are still struggling and trying to recover from the financial blow. What more should the city do to help ensure that those businesses that have managed to survive are able to thrive in Lansing? And I do hope we are at the end. I do have some concerns about the fall when things might change. So we need to be prepared for the fact that this might not be over for our business community. I think we can be offering a lot more technical assistance, particularly to our local entrepreneurs. One of the things we've observed during COVID is that a lot of businesses were not prepared 
to be able to take online orders or to have an alternate kind of delivery system. So one of the things I would like us to see is partner with our Small Business Administration and some of our other experts to make sure that, that our local businesses are prepared for a variety of scenarios to, uh, to, be, to be able to serve their clients. We could also, I would love us to work more on the initiatives that are not entirely in our control, but to bring more of the broadband and other technical supports to our entire community, including our businesses, so that they do have the capacity to use alternate methods for uh, reaching out to their, their clients and their customers. So at this time, I see we, I think we can do more to promote our local businesses as well. And there's definitely research that shows that we can increase or we can reduce poverty by encouraging the communities around us to utilize our services just a small amount every month. So if we can create a program that encourages and markets our local businesses to those communities around us that have a little bit more income, we could make a really big difference in the income not only for our businesses but also for our residents. Thank you. This next question is going to be for Council Member Spitzley. Yes, uh, Council Member Spitzley, you've talked about a need for more unarmed officers to respond to various issues like substance abuse and homelessness. Why is that unarmed aspect so important to you? And have you contemplated if that approach will put more officers at risk in those situations? Well, I think you have to look at it holistically. You know, and, and you know, there's not a one size fits all. I do think that there are instances where you have to, you have unarmed police officers. You know, minor traffic accidents. We don't need armed officer. Excuse me. We don't need armed officers there. Um, you know, and so you know, sometimes you know, we have community police officers, which I would like to see more of them. Um, there would be instances where they're out in a social setting, out interacting with neighborhoods, where you don't need armed officers, and so. You know, it's, it's not that you will never have an armed officer. I firmly believe there are times and places for police officers and armed officers. But I do think that as part of a holistic package to try to address some of the systemic issues that are going on in the city, you have to have multi, you know, a multifaceted approach. And one of those approaches is, is armed, you know, unarmed officers. Another approach is to establish an effective evidence-based gun violence interruption program in Lansing. You know, another one is I want to create an office of neighborhood safety with social workers, paramedics, substance abuse specialists, and other, again, unarmed non-police staff to respond to mental health crisis, substance-related, substance abuse-related issues. Um, you know, sometimes we have folks who avail themselves of the 911 system on a regular basis. We need to look at them outside the 911 system and find out what their issues are and what their needs are and then make the appropriate referrals. Thank you. I have a quick follow-up, really quick. Um, so you talked about, you know, evaluating this, these situations and figuring out, you know, when to be armed and when not to be unarmed. If elected, are you going to provide training resources for that? Well, you have to. I mean, we're, we're talking about a, par a paradigm shift here. We're talking about a uh, systematic and fundamental transformation of public safety. You know, that doesn't happen overnight. And so, you know, we need to, um, you know, talk to our officers. We need to hear what they're thinking, but we also need to hear what the public thinking. Again, we cannot do this by ourselves. And what I'm hearing is that we need less armed interaction and more community-based interaction. And that is going to require um, a lot of training. You know, the president just announced, you know, $300 million for community officers and community-based programs. Council $300 million member, across the state. That That's what I'm talking about. Follow -up. Thank you. Thank you very much. This next question is going to be for Council Member Dunbar. Uh, Council Member, your decision to run for mayor came the same afternoon that Mayor Verge Bonero decided he was not going to run for mayor, uh, which uh, struck us as a notable considering your past allegiances with Mayor Bonero. Uh, to what extent are we going to see elements of a Bonero administration in a Kathy Dunbar administration? That's an interesting question. So I will tell you that I was elected the same year that Verge Bonero came into office. And I agreed with many of his policies. We, the whole council probably voted with him 95% of the time. So if for folks who believe that uh, Verge was a loud, bold, progressive um, mayor, that I will be. I will be. I will take stands. Um, I won't be wishy-washy. I will be proactive. 
I will champion the city. I will go out and look for um, development that, that meets the needs that we need, not wait for it to fall in our lap. Um, you know, I am my own person, though. Virgin and I disagreed on many things. Two of those are right here now, purple hair and a nose ring. And if he's watching, I kept them because they're me. I was urged not to be me by uh, several people um, that said, you'll never be mayor if you look like that. Try me. Try me. Because the skill set is not tied to the trappings. And the skill set is there. So I look forward to being a Dunbar administration with my own ideas and my own initiatives. But I will also be bold. And I will be progressive. And I will be forward thinking. And I will be proud of it. Uh, so, Councilwoman, just to be clear, Verge Venero will not be the man behind the curtain. No. Okay. No. Now, even my man behind the curtain isn't the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. This next question is going to be for Mr. Sheik Omar. Improving the state of the city's unfunded pension and post-employment benefit obligations will play a key role in dictating the city's future financial condition. What, if anything, would you do differently to ensure that unfunded liability stays under control? Thank you for that question. Um, the first thing we need to do as a city is honor the contracts that we signed with our city retirees. Um, Mayor Andy Shore, just this last year, decided to strip away our city retirees' health cares without notifying them. So the first thing that I will do is make sure that we honor the contracts that we signed with our city um, with, with our city retirees, and we got to negotiate better going forward. We got to get rid of any waste that happens in the city. For example, the mayor has two deputy mayors uh, in our city. We don't need two deputy mayors. That, that is a waste. So we'll cut down on the waste. We will negotiate better. We will honor contracts going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. This next question is going to be for Mayor Shore. Growing Lansing with new development projects has been a key part of your reelection platform. What will you do in your second term to ensure that developers are building a future for all residents by ensuring affordable and equitable housing opportunities in the city? Thank you, Kyle. Affordable and equitable housing is, is a huge part of, of my next four years, as it was a huge part of my existing four years. We've been able to create affordable housing, housing for all incomes throughout our city. And I'm proud of that. We just opened up one uh, right on Ottawa. We're working on Walter French right now as an affordable housing. And, and we put forward a, a payment in lieu of taxes, what we call a pilot. Uh, we have been working on, on housing because everybody needs to be able to be housed, whether it is getting housing for our homeless through shelters, through supportive housing, through our Lansing Housing Commission, whether it's uh, getting housing, ensuring we have housing um, for those with affordable needs. Uh, those are all very important, whether it's having housing that's market rate so that people can live, whether it's in our downtown or on our south side or on our east side, whether it's having housing and, and incredible neighborhoods where people can buy. And we know that the, uh, the neighborhood market right now is booming. So we need to make sure that people can afford to buy these houses. All of these options need to be on the table, and they all will be on the table. We've been very successful with that over the last four years. I'm looking forward to continuing to build our population. Lansing was one of only three cities in the last estimate of population that increased our population. It was us, Grand Rapids, and Kalamazoo. Again, I'm proud of that. I'm proud that people want to live here. They see the excitement, the pride of Lansing, and they want to live here. And again, we need to have housing, whether it's workforce housing, whether it's affordable housing, whether it's market rate housing. All of these options need to be on the table, and they will be under my next four years. Thank you. This next question is going to be for Council Member Spitzley. Yes, um, Council Member Spitzley, um, leaders with the Black Lives Matter of Lansing um, have criticized your leadership on council, mm -hmm. um, claiming you've done nothing to hold the current administration accountable and are, quote, playing politics with our children's lives. How do you respond to that? Well, I respond to it that everybody has a role in making Lansing a great place to live. Um, and everybody has different opinions, and I respect that. We all have a, we, we all have a role to play. Um, I welcome uh, the criticism. I welcome, um, you know, uh, suggestions on how to do better to serve the citizens of Lansing. But I will tell you this, that um, I have been on the Development and Planning Committee. I've been on the Ways and Means Committee. Um, I've been, I've chaired the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. 
Um, and each one of those committees, um, I have uh, brought forth issues and ordinances. Most recently, we, um, I introduced the ordinance to um, fund the uh, violence uh, diversion program by $260,000. It was an ordinance, and we worked on that this previous summer with Ingham County. Um, I have introduced uh, the ordinance to declare um, racism a public health crisis. But I've also introduced other ordinances. I've helped uh, amend the human rights ordinance. Um, and I've helped um, work on budgeting for, you know, the police and the fire. And so, you know, I, I you know, I, I think that as a leader, you have to be able to take criticism. You have to be able to um, look at that and look at your role in it and, and try to do better. And so, you know, I, I respect what they say. I don't always agree with it, but we agree with some issues as well. And so, you know, we, we all have to work together to make Lansing a better place. Thank you. This next question is for you, Councilmember Dunbar. Councilwoman, you've been accused of sexual harassment by local independent newspaper publisher Rena Risper. She also contends that you've repeatedly used the N-word among other racially offensive tropes. You've also denied these allegations. Why should residents believe you rather than your accusers? So first, I'm going to start by saying I believe survivors. I am a survivor, childhood survivor, adult survivor. That is not the case in this situation. What we have here is a friendship, a very dear friendship, that I valued many, many, many years ago and a falling out in that friendship. And during that friendship, I said something that turned out to be insensitive. I didn't know it at the time. It was not the N-word. As soon as I learned that it was insensitive, I haven't said it since. And when I heard that the accusations were being made, I decided to take accountability. I wrote a piece about this because I said, that's the kind of mayor I want to be. If I make a mistake, I want to be the example for my kids. I'm going to take accountability for it. And I wrote about it. I had no idea when I wrote that, that all these other things were going to come out. And they're just not true. And I, I have to wonder, you know, this, this happened supposedly 16 years ago. I've been elected four times. I was, she supported me when I ran the first time. Our argument that ended our friendship happened right after I was elected. Uh, it was a funding issue where I didn't support funding her program. She ran against me in 2009. This never came up as an opponent of mine. I've run again twice since, never came up. Now it's coming up. So I have to wonder Council why. member, that is your time. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. This next question is for you, Mr. Shikomar. Yes, um, Farhan, the city opened a community center last year to help house homeless uh, in the city. By some estimates, there were still more than two dozen unsheltered homeless people living in Lansing. What steps would you take as mayor to support those struggling with homelessness in Lansing? Uh, first of all, as a refugee, as an immigrant, housing is one of my top priority. Housing is a human right, and we need to address it as such. Um, just a few months ago, I went to Back 40, and I saw how those people were living there. They were living there in the middle of the cold winter. It's sad what's been happening to, this, to these folks. So the thing that I would do is I would partner with housing, such as the Lansing Housing uh, Commission. We will create housing for our homeless people. We will fund more grants towards uh, programs that build affordable housing. Uh, as far as big developers go, they're not going to get any tax break until they can show us that they can, they can create affordable housing uh, for our homeless people, and, and that's my plan. Thank you. This next question is going to be for Mayor Shore. Mayor Shore, you're the only person on stage to have received a dose of the COVID-19 vaccine that was allotted to the city before you were eligible to receive one under state guidelines. Do you think that was a mistake? Well, thank you for the question. Um, and we have addressed this often, so I'm, I'm happy to, to address this once again. Uh, those vaccines were provided to the city uh, by Sparrow Hospital. And at the time, I said, and the governor said, and our Department of Health and Human Services said, any shot in an arm was an important shot in an arm to get to uh, the vaccination goal. Our city and our city employees were offered that option. We have employees that are out doing code compliance. We have employees that are at our parks. We have employees 
that do a lot of work outside of our police and firefighters. Um, we got that option and we gave it to our employees. But I have been telling our employees, get the shot, get the shot, get the shot, get the shot, because we need to be vaccinated. And I could not sit out from that when I was asking our employees to get that shot. So I'm proud that I got the shot. Now, I got it last because I didn't want us to run out of vaccinations because I got it and the code compliance person wasn't getting it. So I got it last. But for me to be an advocate to actually get that shot uh, for all of our employees, when the offer came, many of them took it and I took it to show them that it's the right thing to do. And I think that was the right decision. I have a follow-up question to that. And that's just to ask you, based on what you've just said, does that mean that the rules don't apply to you? The rules were, if you get offered the shot by the hospital, you should get it. We are not the, the, uh, the State Department of, of Health and Human Services. We are not the County Department of, uh, of Health. It was offered by, one of, by our leading hospital here in Lansing, one of our two hospitals in Lansing. It was offered by them. And the advice was, get the shot, get shots in arms. Otherwise, those shots are going to be wasted. We did not want to waste a shot. Employees got it, and I told them I would take it along with them. I took it last. Thank you. Mayor Storr, that is your time. Thank this you. next question and the final one of this round is going to be for Ms. Huber. Uh, Ms. Huber, going back to your opening statement here, why do you believe Lansing needs to diminish the power of the mayor in form of a city manager type of government? And why should voters elect a leader who's willing to hand off most of her executive power to an unelected appointee? I appreciate the question, and I understand the complex issues around moving to that system. For the last 15 years in my work around, the, around Lansing, as I said before, seeing the underbelly of the city and how our strong manager system has not served us well, I felt we need to make that change. And for 40 years ago, our leaders made a change that gutted our ethics ordinances and put so much power in the hands of our city attorney. In many ways, it is now the city attorney who has leverage over our citizens and our city employees. And you'll see that many, many residents and employees have been silenced in these last 40 years by numerous administrations, and that has basically taken the power away from, this, from citizens. So even though we have a mayor system, we have city council, people have not been getting represented well. We have fought many times on policies and on issues, and we've not been heard. We've been fighting for all these changes for me, at least for these last 15 years, and we've won very few of those changes. So I believe that it's time for a professional to stand in. We need to get politics out of our decision making here. We need to get lobbyist money and big dollar donors and special interests out of running our city because that's what's happening at this time. So we don't have that control that we think we might have. The electoral system is not working. So I have more faith in a, a professional at this point, and that's what 80% of Michigan cities are doing. They have professionals running their cities, not politicians. And Ms. as- Huber, that is your you. time. Thank you very much. So we do not have time for another full round of questions tonight. So I'm going to ask a question, and we're going to start with Mayor Shore, make our way down the line with each of the candidates, and you'll have 30 seconds to answer it. So this question is, is there a specific portion of the budget that you think should be reduced? Well, thank you, Sarah. I'm confident in the budget that we have. We passed an incredible budget uh, last year. The budget reflects the needs of the city of Lansing. So I, I could go through the budget. I can't do that in 30 seconds. But I am confident that the budget we have is able to support our neighborhoods, our safety, our, our jobs and infrastructure. Um, I would love to see more money for roads, uh, but we're counting on the state for that and the federal government. Ms. Huber. I am not concerned necessarily about the amount of the spending, but I am very concerned about the way we've been using our money. There are significant federal grants that we've been receiving that I feel we have very much mismanaged and we have done more disservice to our residents. We have HUD money that has helped people to have their homes instead of being repaired. They've been demolished. We have been using funds in such a way that homelessness programs are not helping people and it's getting them right back around on the street. We have a, a revolving system. We need to make investments in longer term solutions, not that mandates. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you. Uh, I don't have an answer of one specific uh, department or program that we need to cut. I think that we need to look at our budget and we need to reach out to our citizens and figure out and ask them what their priorities are. And based on that input, 
then we look at our budget. What I do know is that we, we're consistently spending more than what we're bringing in. And that's not sustainable because what that does is it, it um, makes us rely more on our rainy day fund. Um, and it, that's just not sustainable. That is our your rainy time. day fund will, will run out. Thank you. Council Member Dunbar. Thank you. I've already raised my hand when asked the question about the police department. So I will say that uh, I will more than likely consider uh, redirecting funds into more front end programs that prevent crime as opposed to carceral solutions. I also think that we need to be looking at ways to make the public trust the police. I know that the mayor mentioned earlier about uh, trust. When we have kids that are afraid to call 911, when kids are pulled over and their personal property is taken without warrants, they're not trusting the police. That is your time. Thank you. Mr. Sheik Omar? Uh, the police budget is one thing that I will reduce uh, immediately. Um, as I've said before, the, the police officers do not keep our communities safe. They do not prevent crime. They do not stop crime. And right now, they're not even solving crime. So it is time that we focus and deploy community-led intervention programs. It is time that we invest back into the program. Uh, you just had a mayor and a city councilwoman who don't even know anything about their budget, and they're telling you that they have to look at it. We don't have to look at anything. We need to invest back into the community. Our that kids need time. resources. They need opportunities. Mr. Sheik and they Omar, need thank you very guidance. much. Thank, thank you. you. So we have time for one more 30-second question from each of the candidates. Mr. Sheik Omar, we'll start with you, make our way down. This also pertains to the budget. If elected mayor, what is one portion of the budget that you would shield from future cuts? That Mr. Sheik Omar, you would shield. Um, our, our fire department and our infrastructure. Um, these are important services that we need uh, and that our citizens depend on. So I'll make sure that there are no cuts to the fire department, that there are no cuts to our infrastructure. We need sidewalks uh, for our communities. Our, our neighborhoods are suffering from systemic disinvestment, and we need to take care of our sidewalks in order, in order to um, help families that live there. Thank you. Council Member Dunbar. Thank you. I would shield the Human Relations and Community Services budget. Um, it is uh, guarded by uh, our charter that a certain portion of our money is set aside. I would not want to change that. I believe that we need to be helping the most vulnerable in our community. We need to be providing services, food equity, affordable housing, whatever is needed to, to serve the folks who are uh, least represented, uh, have the least resources in our community, because that is a focus area that I am not seeing taken care of right now. Thank you. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you. I would preserve our neighborhood and citizens engagement budget. And in fact, I would probably augment it with funding from our human resources, I'm sorry, our, our, from our HRCS budget. Um, I would add a grant writer. Um, I would use funding passed through from CBDG monies from the federal dollars through our neighborhood citizens engagement to provide grants to community-based organizations that are already doing violence prevention work boots on the ground, um, I would um, augment that with an Office of Neighborhood Safety. Thank you. Ms. Huber. Well, as a neighborhood leader for 15 years, I have always said that parks and recreation is almost as important to our budget as police. So that's one that I would shield. If we're serious about reducing crime and keeping people safe, having positive recreation and having spaces that are open and utilize crime prevention through environmental design principles, that's one of the best ways that we have to make sure we're having positive recreation in our city instead of negative recreation. And that's one of the solutions that we used in our neighborhood to turn an area that had lots of crime in it and gun violence. Ms. Huber, thank you very much. Mayor Shore, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. I would shield our neighborhoods. Uh, that's something that I am proud that we were able to create. When I first came in, the first thing I did was to create a department of neighborhoods. Uh, I would shield that. The work that we're doing to provide grants, the work that we're doing to augment our parks, the work that we're doing to put money into sidewalks for the first time, the work that we're doing to make sure that roads money is going to our roads. All of these things are tremendously important to our community, to a sense of place, to the pride that we see in our community. Uh, we're gonna provide more art, all of those pieces as part of the neighborhoods. Thank you very much to each of our candidates. So now we are going to move on to our closing statements tonight. Each candidate is going to have one minute to say whatever else they would like to say to the city of Lansing tonight. Mayor Shore, we're going to start with you. Make our way down the line. All right, well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you to the City Pulse. Thank you to Fox 47 for having this, this candidate debate and discussion. 
Um, I, I think this is a great idea. I'm hopeful that people watched it on TV. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve as mayor of this wonderful city. We have accomplished so much in these four years, these unprecedented four years. We've been able to, to improve our neighborhoods, to improve our community as a, a national city, to boost our neighborhoods and strengthen them. We've been able to create jobs and investment in our city, uh, of $2 billion of investment, including an affordable grocery store and housing throughout the city. We've been able to augment city infrastructure and services. We've been able to create new relationships and heal relationships throughout the city. All of this while navigating several crises over the last four years. To me, it's been an honor. I'm going to continue to do the work for as long as the citizens of Lansing will have me. Uh, I invite everyone to go to www.andyshore.com to check out my platform, and I hope to have your vote on August 3rd. Thank you. Ms. Huber. Thank you. Well, I would love to have your vote, but even more important to me at this time and in this campaign is bringing people together so we can start solving problems. One of the things I've observed in these last years is that we have citizens and employees, people that are scared to come out and say what's happened to them. They've been victimized by the city. There are so many issues that we need to address, but we've been separated and disenfranchised by our government in many ways, particularly when Mayor Bonero defunded and disbanded some of our neighborhood groups that we have and that we got replaced by things that now the city runs. So in order for us to solve big problems, we have to come together, even though people are scared and they're afraid to come out. They have but they're afraid of consequences that are real. So I'd ask you, no matter who you're going to vote for, please go to my website, melissaforlansing.com, and that's Melissa, F-O-R, Lansing.com, and please sign up so that we can stay in touch and try to rebuild what we've lost over these years of communities and people coming together. We need to work together. Thank you. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you. Um, first, I would be remiss if I didn't offer my condolences to the families of the recent um, victims of the gun violence. I have two sons, and it, it breaks my heart um, to imagine the pain that they're going through. And, and, and this is a priority. It's a public health crisis. And we need to stop working in silos and realize that the only way we're going to address the issue is by working together. Um, we can't do this alone. Lansing's a great community, but there are challenging times ahead, and we need leadership that's transparent and not afraid to own up to their mistakes. We need leadership that can make the tough decisions to put the city on strong fiscal footing. And finally, we need a leader who's not afraid to hold herself and those who do wrong in her administration accountable for their actions, and I am that leader. But I cannot and should not do that alone. Lansing, only together can we face our fiscal and societal challenges. Working together, we can heal this city and have this city be a place where all feel safe, welcome, and appreciated. Thank you. Council Member Dunbar. Thank you. I gave up my seat on the council to run for mayor. I proudly served as a city council person for 16 years, but I felt it was time to, to put somebody in the mayor's office that gets things done. And I, I would like to just point out, just for a moment, um, because we've heard from candidates uh, and some of the questions that uh, there's a little bit of ac inaction among some folks. And I get in there and I do things. I, the first year I was in there, I wrote the human rights ordinance to protect people from discrimination in housing and employment. I worked on the rain gardens to make sure that we weren't putting pollutants into our river. I worked with the South Lansing, um, I'm sorry, the uh, Rio Town, South Washington project to help them facilitate visioning that ended up changing the entire streetscape and led the way for transformation in South Washington and Rio Town. And just recently, the lug nuts. I saved them $2 million in the city. So I, re I request your vote so that I can do for you what needs to be done. Thank you. Mr. Sheik Omar. Folks, business as usual cannot be the next, cannot be the approach going forward. This last year, we've had 22 citizens die in this city. This year, we've had 16 dead already. We have nine black current and former city employees suing the mayor for racial discrimination. You have a family by the name of Hulan who are suing, who are suing the mayor and the city for the wrongful death of Anthony Hulan. Anthony Hulan was murdered inside our jail. That's what the Ingham County Medical Examiner has ruled his death. He ruled it as a homicide. We have a mayor who was publicly condemned by the NAACP for his actions. 
Tonight, you saw many politicians make promises. We don't want promises. We don't want what they're going to do, because we already know what they didn't do. We, you just heard a mayor ask for a redo. We cannot afford a redo. We cannot afford another four years of racism, bigotry, and hate. We cannot afford another four years of racial discrimination. We cannot afford another four years of wrong, wrongful death lawsuits. We can do better. We will do better. I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes our evening. A big thank you to all of our candidates tonight. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you for answering these questions. And I want to give a thank you to our panelists as well. Thank you so much for all of your work. And a big thank you to the City Pulse for partnering with Fox 47 to put this on and get all these questions from the viewers. So a reminder for all of you guys who are watching tonight, absentee ballots have been sent out. If you plan to vote absentee, those ballots must be returned by 8 p.m. on Election Day. And the primary will be held on August 3rd followed by the general election on November 2nd. If you do want to rewatch this debate and our in-depth candidate profiles, please visit fox47news.com slash 2021. You can see specific moments from tonight. You can also visit lansingcitypulse.com, and then you can read their primary election preview edition. So once again, thank you for everyone tonight for all of your work, for answering these questions, and for doing all this for the Lansing community. There are going to be more stories coming up tonight. We actually have a rundown of everything that happened. That'll be on Fox 47 News at 10. Have a great evening.